Welcome to the Tom's River Show. Pat Amelia here. You concerned Tom's River resident there. That's why we do this show, because you're concerned. We try to entertain you. We try to inform you. We try to make things happen here, like the timer. Me and that timer do not get along in this studio. North Bergen studio, no problem with the timer. It works for me when I press the buttons. But my uh, guy behind me says it's the angle I work the timer at. It is a heat wave again this week. But it looks like the weekend will be good here in Tom River and Seaside Heights. Try to enjoy the good weather. Uh, you had a lot of thunderstorms during the week, but it should be a good weather to hit the boardwalk in Seaside Heights. Take some time to go to the boardwalk. You know, in Jersey City, yeah, so, yeah, like the Empire State Building was across the river from us in Jersey City. It was, it is. Uh, Statue of Liberty is. You know, until I was in like my 40s, I never seen the Statue of Liberty, the front anyway. She's kind of facing the backside of uh, Jersey, faces up backside faces Jersey City. And yeah, you know, you these landmarks and things you can go to anytime in Jersey City, we never do. And it's probably the same thing with people in Tons River. Go up to the boardwalk. You got so many businesses. For that matter, we're going to start next week on a special. Uh, what's new in Seaside as we get ready to bring back the Shore Show this year. We didn't do it last year because of that uh, pandemic thing. Uh, today, what are we going to talk about? Well, there was an election in Tom's River, and there was some a huge upset. My friend, a uh, longtime uh, cheerleader for Tom's River, Maria Maruka, was defeated last night. Well, I'm doing this on Wednesday when we shoot this. Uh, unfortunate, but that's what the political sword is. You know, you, you, you can't win every election. And I'm sure she'll be back in some capacity somewhere down the line. Dan Roderick was the victor, and we're going to probably spend a good majority of the show on last night's Tom's River election, when we'll get into the uh, the governor's race and some other knickknacks here and there sort of thing. But you're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Secaucus Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. Cutting edge surgical care is right here in Secaucus. Robotic surgery is safer. Shorter hospital stays. Smaller abdominal incisions. The size of an M&M. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. We're back, Pat O'Melia, Tom's River Show, Tom's River resident there, that's why we do the show. Well, as I was saying, the election, uh, the primary here in Tom's River, there was a huge upset. And as I said before, Maria Maruka, uh, I think she has served 12 years as a councilwoman here in Tom's River. It's unfortunate she lost. She's, like I said, the big proponent for Tom's River. Uh, she's the reason I'm in Seaside Heights. She brought me here a long time ago when she was running the BID in Seaside Heights to bring us in here to do uh, taping. And we the Shore Show was a creation of us. Uh, and uh, it continues to go on. Hopefully I'll bring her on the, uh, the set this year for the Tom's River Show. Maria's out. And, you know, she'll serve until uh, January 1st. Uh, 
Dan Roderick is in. Uh, probably the whole focus of Mo Hill's team was to get Roderick out. Uh, yeah, actually, now I think about it, I think Roderick was the highest vote getter in the uh, the compl in the uh, whole Tom's River election. So um, congratulations to Roderick. Condolences there to Maria, but Maria is going to pop up in some shape or form. She is too good of a public servant to sit on the sidelines and wait for another cycle. But yeah, you can see her coming back for council at large. Um, she's far from done uh, serving the people of Tom's River. Mo was hoping to knock out Dan Roderick. That was the entire focus, was to get rid of Roderick. Yeah, they, they, they censored him on the council. They argued with them. They ignored Dan. And well, they're going to have to continue to try to ignore Dan, but that's not going to happen. Dan, I, I, I got to look at him. I'm pretty sure he was the he got the most votes of all the, um, the uh, candidates in the uh, just completed primary election. So like I said, congratulations. Um, instead of knocking out Roderick, what Team Mo Hill managed to do was lose Mo Hill's main councilmate, his competent, who was the former council president, uh, the strong candidate that he had on the ticket, Maria Maruka. I don't think any of us ever considered uh, Maria losing. But unfortunately, it did happen. Now, Dan Roderick is the rock star. Yeah, all focus, you know, from changing the Republican clubs to the entire purpose of Team Mo Hill was to knock out Roderick and didn't even come close to knocking Roderick. You may have made Roderick even bigger now, if that's possible. He is the rock star going into the general election in November. And I don't know how Mo Hill's team is going to deal with this. And that's what we're going to talk about. What happens going forward? That's going to be interesting. Because you have the two factions, you have the Mo Hill Republican Club and you have the old uh, regular Republican Club that was decertified. Uh, strategy we'll get into later in the show. Uh, strategy that apparently has now come back to bite people on the butt. Where do you go forward? Do you have uh, a combined Republican team that they like lock elbows and kumbaya together or we're going to work together to knock out the Democrats and serve Tom River? I think not. I can't see how the two candidates from Mo Hill's team and Roderick and Lamb um, run together in a kumbaya uh, combined uh, Tom River ticket. There is just too much animosity, particularly between Mo Hill and Dan Roderick, for them to be locking in elbows and humming the same tune, you know what I mean? So don't look for that. I, I don't see that coming. Uh, the thing is, do they continue to fight, which now will be in fighting? Because you're going to the general election, you're going to have you know, Republicans versus the Democrats. And remember, the last time around, the last ward elections, the Democrats took three of the four seats. For that matter, the strong candidate in the election four years ago was Maria Maruka. And she was the only one that survived. And it was close. And it was around 200 votes she won by, which is pretty much the number that she lost by now. You need some final totals, you know, mail-in votes and absentee ballots still need to be counted, I believe. But she's, she's going to lose this uh, primary by around 200 votes. And again, it's unfortunate, but and that's politics and after elections. Um, the people that she served for 12 years, they didn't come out in force and help her for another, uh, another four years. I'm going to bet right now the infighting will continue between the two factions. Mo Hill, Dan Roderick, I don't see uh, how they're going to coexist. You know, maybe what I'll do next week, let Roderick catch his breath after a, you know, a heavy campaign cycle. Maybe we'll bring him in the next week or two and do an interview. But right now, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom River Show. I'll be right back. At the Regional Hospital, we promise to be prepared for your emergency. We promise to provide world-class robotic surgical care. We promise to treat you like family. To provide accurate diagnostic care. To provide the most innovative orthopedic care at your doorsteps. We promise to treat your baby like our own. 
to never stop investing in the best of spinal care. To be with you every step of the way. Here at Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to take care of our community. We're back, Tom's River Show. Pat or Amelia here. You there? We're talking about the results of the um, Tom River primary, a Republican, and there was a Democratic primary too. Uh, Turnback, who is a seated councilman now, one of the uh, victors from the last go around, is um, running again, of course, and he won last night. I know there are other Democratic uh, candidates who uh, won last night, and what we'll do as we go forward into the election. We'll do the debates again. You know, we did um, the uh, the ma ma mayoral debates. We had, you know, Mo and Corrado in here, and Dan Roderick was one of those. Uh, we'll have them in again. Uh, we'll do the wards. Boom, boom, boom. You know, we'll do one week. We'll do ward one, ward two, that sort of thing. Um, I'm thinking there's going to be, uh, at least in some wards, three candidates. Well, I'll get into that as we go on here. But we will bring you all the election news, as we have done in the past. We'll get to uh, know all the candidates. Like I said, I'll try to bring Roderick in the next week or so, let him catch his breath. Uh, he just ran, came off a, a hard-fought win in the primary. And as he goes forward, we'll bring him in. We'll bring Mo. We'll bring all the candidates in. Again, we'll do the debates. And we'll do them live like we, like we did the last time. Um, like I said, right now, Dan Roderick is the rock star. His... Political future is looking pretty, pretty, pretty good here in Tom's River. Mo Hill's political future is also on the line here. He can't afford to lose another seat. Right now, the best he can hope for is his two candidates come across. But where before you just had Roderick to deal with, now you're going to have Lamb to deal with. And these guys, are gonna, especially Roderick, he's... <laughs> He, he wins the general election, he's going to be supercharged, Roderick. And Lamb's going to come in, and he's going to do the best he can for the people of Tom River. And there is some blood in the water between Mo Hill and uh, possible Councilman Lamb over the, um, his resigning from the parking authority here in Tom River. Uh, Mo called him a quitter. I'm sure that hasn't been forgotten yet. Uh, but Mo's uh, political future is on the line right now. He can't afford to lose another seat here. He's going to have a very combative uh, two more years with the Tom River Council. And I've seen how this happens. I've seen the results of this going back to the days, again, in Jersey City, the big Tom River. Tom River is kind of the small Jersey City with uh, Mayor Glenn D. Cunningham, where there was a split council. There were people loyal to Glenn, and there were people loyal to... Uh, Glenn was battling the Democratic organization at the time, the ACDO, and it made managing the city very difficult. Uh, Mo Hill, he, he thought just having Roderick was a problem. He gets Lamb in there, maybe a Democrat or two, and that could be interesting. Or an independent. What? An independent, man? What do you mean? Don't discard or dismiss George Gilmore yet. Now, I doubt he's going to run any candidates against Roderick and um, Lamb, for that matter, because I know George was involved one way or another with Roderick's campaign. In the back, you know, George is a backroom guy, in the shadows. For that matter, in last week's show, Mike, if you have that still, we had the campaign signs we talked about that were identical. There's a reason they were identical. More than likely, George picked them out. Uh, I doubt if George, there they are. 
That was uh, Georgia's candidates, Emma Rosa and Quinn, for assembly. And they had Roger. Hmm, I look a little pretty similar. No, I think they do look similar. Uh, I would not be surprised if there is an independent ticket where George is going to focus on uh, some wards here. Um, does Gilmore run two independent candidates against Quinslick, Quinslisk and Cesari? I bet he does. I bet he does. And Gilmore knows far better than I the lay of the political land in Tom's River. I, I see Cesari, am I doing that? Cesaro? Cesari as the weakest link for an eventual uh, three-seat win. Roderick, Lamb, maybe an independent then? Possible a Democrat? You know, but I wouldn't see you. would be surprised. Was Gilmore has a lot of sway in Tom's River. And you can take to the bank, he's going to do something here. Now, could there be a four-seat win with Roderick and Lamb and two independent candidates? That's very possible. Every one of those seats that is filled by someone not from Team Mo Hill is a problem for Mo Hill going forward. Now, as we get back, we're going to break the commercial in a bit. Mo Hill needs a new campaign leadership. Whoever ran this campaign and managed to lose Maria Maruka shouldn't be running this campaign going into the general election. Somebody's got to take the fall for this. And usually with a disaster, and that's what it was last night, you lost two of those four seats, and you're the, the seated mayor, that's a problem. All right, you're watching the Tom's River Show. We'll be right back. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets. Price to fit your budget. Installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City. 201-792-2712. We're back. Tom Dribber Show. Pat O'Melia here. You there. Getting back to campaign. Like I said, whoever ran the campaign for Mo Hill and the uh, defeated ticket there. Again, winning two out of the four seats is not the goal that Mo Hill had in place when his campaign started. He would, he wasn't, you know, he couldn't have been 100% sure they could beat Roderick. They were hoping, and that was really the focus. And it was it Crispin? He lost to uh, Roderick. That was not unexpected, Roderick winning. Losing Maria Maruka was a huge blow to Mo Hill, politically and personally. He was, he was a confident for a uh, confidant for uh, Mo Hill. Uh, you know, she carried the water for the Tom River Republicans, and she's out. Whoever came up with this strategy for this campaign has to take the fall for this. If Mo doesn't come up with new campaign leadership, he's dooming himself as he goes forward. Mo's a pretty smart guy. He's a doctor. He's an admiral. City council for uh, two, three terms. He's been, he's the mayor. He won a very uh, uh, contested campaign for mayor here in Tom's River. He knows what's on the line. And he knows he needs new leadership going forward in his campaign. And he's got some time, because the election is not until November. You know, we're sitting here in the middle of June. So we have time. Uh, there are campaign people who, uh, you know, he can hire to come in and try to uh, complete this final leg. But as I said earlier, if he loses one more seat going into this election, and right now, Lamb and Rod Roderick then, I don't see how Roderick loses. And Lamb did pretty damn good also, taking out Maruka. So you got to figure those two guys uh, uh, have to be considered the, uh, the front runners. It's definitely Roderick. Um, Moe's got to come up with another plan. Or to use a little naval terminology, 
Mo's going to be on the plank. If he loses another seat, he's going to be walking that plank as he comes up for his own re-election soon. You know, the primary was dirty. I know um, Mo's camp complained about flyers and campaign strategies from uh, Team Roderick. They worked. And all campaigns are dirty now. There's no such thing as a clean campaign. Uh, and you know what? The general election, that's going to be dirty too. Probably dirtier than the primary. Moe's got to come up with some new strategy. I believe Roderick and in the background looming George Gilmore, they're going to have a very successful strategy going forward. Now, speaking of strategies, um, to get control of George Gilmore's uh, Republican club that didn't work out in Tom's River after they were like for 35 years, they were the Republican club in Tom's River. The strategy of forming a new one and splitting the Republican base here in Tom's River, uh, that has come back to bite Mo and Frank Holman on the butt. I'm sure primary night and the next morning, there are a lot of Republicans saying, what the hell do we do here? We actually split our own tickets. And that's exactly what the results of this is. That is a split. When you could have had a combined and try to work together, and I appreciate Mo Hill. The, the, the club in existence didn't support him. He had to take him to court to get campaign money. It was, it was contentious. And what Mo should have done, he should have slowly taken over that club after he became the mayor. He's a big kahuna in Tom River. That didn't work, so they started another one. But the other club, Republican, uh, regular Republican club, was still in existence. And that strategy has come back to bite them on the butt. The result of that strategy? Well, here's what you got coming into November. You probably have, in my opinion, a four-way dance. I was looking at a three-way dance. Now we're looking at a four-way dance. And what do you say a four-way dance? Pat, going back to when I first broke into radio and the media, I used to do professional wrestling. You know, Hulk Hogan, Ted DiBiase, Macho Man, Diamond Dallas Page, those sort of guys. Uh, four-way dance? Well, you're going to have Roderick and Lamb. You're going to have uh, Quinzalisk and uh, Cesare. I'll eventually learn how to pronounce that name. You're going to have a Democratic ticket. And you're going to probably have an independent ticket, at least in wards three and four, I believe. So, yeah, that's a four-way dance, my good people. That, that, that's going to be a problem as you split those votes more and more. And, again, I'm positive Roderick was the highest vote getter. Lamb probably number two. Those guys are probably considered and should be the favorites going into this campaign. Mo can't lose another seat. Whether it's Democrat or an independent. So he needs new leadership for Team Mo going into the general election. All right, we're gonna break the commercial. You're watching the Tom River Show. We'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, live like you want. We're back. Tom Dribber Show here. Pat O'Melia. At least I can pronounce that name. I believe I'm trying to pronounce Sikosi as um, one of Mo Hill's uh, 
remaining candidates there. I got to spell three different ways in my notes. <laughs> I've always had a problem with names. I have a hard enough to pronounce on my own. Let me get the papers out of my way. There we go. Got no fingernails. That's the problem there. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff, a little housekeeping here, what else is going on in Tom's River and surrounding areas. Tom's River police have announced there's going to be a curfew from uh, 10 p.m. until, I think, 5 a.m. in place for uh, until running through Labor Day, so right through the summer, for uh, the northern section of town by Ortley, for Normandy Beach, and Chadwick Beach in an effort to prevent any late-night mischief. Now, they had a problem last year. They didn't have a problem the year before. They had a problem last year. One, had, you had people pent up last year from the, the pandemic. So any escape into the outdoors, you know, had, people lost it a little bit. Yeah, if there is a situation on the beaches this year, and I can see putting in the, uh, the curfew, but to do it proactively right now when there hasn't been an issue for years and years. You had a problem last year, but again, as soon as you let young kids out after they've been cramped up, you know, they, they, they made a break last <laughs> summer through the, the height of the pandemic. You know, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they had some situations. And I, I can appreciate it. I don't think we need a, um, a curfew now. Uh, in the governor's race, I almost passed over this information, we got uh, Jack Citarelli versus Murphman, Murphy. Um, Jack Citarelli didn't exactly win huge all through the state. Um, actually, if you added up the votes his competitors received, they got more votes than Jack did. So that doesn't bode well for Jack going into the general election against Murphy. But I'm at an Ocean County. Uh, Citarelli uh, got 21,295 votes. His opposition, his competition uh, with Singe, uh, Rizzo, and uh, Levine, they received 23,296. They actually got more votes combined. So there's a, a split in the GOP statewide. Can Jack uh, bring everybody to the table? I don't know. But if Jack wants to have a chance at winning in New Jersey, and people say, oh, you can't do that. Democrats are all Democrats here. Christy Todd Whitman, uh, Whitman won twice. Chris Christie won twice. So it happened in the very recent past. We'll see what it can do. COVID-19 moratoriums are still in effect. Uh, the ones that are evictions until uh, the end of the year. They're not getting evicted. Uh, shut-offs and the utility shut-offs, not going to happen. And insurance cancellations. All those are held off until the end of January, uh, end of this year, um, till uh, January. And uh, I guess uh, Governor, well, we'll see who the governor is then. I almost said Governor Murphy. And unless Jack can solidify the uh, GOP base in New Jersey, and it certainly looks pretty splintered right now to me, I don't know how well that's going to work out. Now, remember, you're going to have a good weekend. Try to make some time to go down to uh, Seaside Heights to hit the boardwalk. You got a lot of new stands. We're going to be working on that next week. We got to get into some new footage because there was a lot of construction going on. You know, the cabanas are a lot further along than the footage we have. And you got Mr. Fries up there, and you got a cheese mac macaroni stand. You got a lot of new stands up there. So we'll be focusing on that. I'm out of show. You'll be good. You'll be safe. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.